welcome to the $100 or less DIY pumpless meth kit. What you see here is all you need to make this work. I have a 17 PSI coolant overflow reservoir I got off eBay for like 10 bucks or something. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's for some GM of some sort. GM Korea Company. I don't know what it was exactly. But it had a layout that would work pretty well. Uh, you need an inlet port for boost pressure right here and you need an outlet port for the meth right here that's it so 17 psi capable tank it's probably a little bit small and as you can tell i've already tested it that's why water is going everywhere but uh it's uh it's probably a little small but hey it's a good place to start so the next most important thing is going to be this check valve this is a ford part uh, it's a heater bypass valve and when vacuum is present here it just closes and opens and that prevents the engine from siphoning the meth uh, out during high vacuum situations like cruising or idle or whatever because you definitely don't want that uh, then you have a few lines and hoses and bits uh, this is a vacuum cap for uh, the extra nipple that we will not be using. Keep your jokes to yourselves. Then here is an assortment of fittings. We need a bunch of uh, vacuum fittings and such. We need a one-way check valve. I happen to have this, but practically any automotive one-way check valve will work. And then you need a nozzle. The nozzle was by far the most expensive thing. By the way, this was like 14 bucks. The nozzle was expensive for two reasons. One, because I wanted it out of stainless, because meth will react with stainless. Or, I'm sorry, meth will react with aluminum. Uh, and uh, trying to avoid that. And two, I wanted the option to run nitrous. Because, as you know, if you've been at this for any length of time, uh, too much is never enough. So that should give me uh, a little extra room to grow, so to speak. There is the port. That's the nitrous, and that'll be capped off for the time being. And of course, I also bought a few jets, uh, also stainless steel for the same reason. Uh, the uh, sizing of the jets came by some math. I figured out about how much uh, fuel I was using based on duty cycle and data logs and all that. And, you know, roundabout came up with what turned out to be actually a pretty good guess. Uh, I got a 62,000 jet. Um, and all that really means is that's just the size of the hole in the jet. Let's see if we can get that to focus at all. There it is. So that's all that that means. Um, and it turned out that 62,000s gave me the flow I wanted. Will it give me what I wanted in the tune? We'll find out in probably the, the third part, but let's call it part the last. Uh, when we dyno test this thing. Uh, there's a couple of things. These are just regular vacuum reducers that you can buy. I have them picking around. Uh, same with the T. But these two fittings are kind of special. Uh, first, we'll look at this fitting. This actually goes from this size down to a smaller size, which in this case happens to be... Uh, let me think this through. Yeah, it's going to be, I believe, this one. Or maybe, I don't, I don't remember how I set it up. But you needed it to go to this size because this is an A and 3. This screws on here. This screws onto the nozzle because that's a 37 degree taper, an A and taper. And by the way, this happens to be a brake hose or a brake line. But it's Teflon lined, it should be okay. But then how do you terminate this side? And the easiest way was with an AN3 bulkhead connector, which I used the mini lathe or the mini mill as a mini lathe to turn the threads off of this size and turn it into a nipple. So it's an AN3 to a uh, barb effectively now. So just tighten that up. And that's your connection. And then it's bridged a little further with, uh, I don't know, some size of this stuff. And uh, then it goes to this. Now, the reason why you have this funky reducer, this was actually made from um, 
a piece of Delrin stock, a piece of round Delrin stock, again made on the mini mill because I could not find a reducer to go from anything that small to anything that big in one step. But that's what we need because of the size of the discharge on the tank and the size of these nipples here to here. So made that, I can show you a quick before still, boom. And that one also shows the, uh, the stainless uh, fitting before uh, the lathe work. So anyway, let's come back here and let's walk through how this works. So we have our tank, okay? The tank will see a positive pressure. So that's gonna come into this, this side. This is a 3 8 fitting. So we get ourselves a 3 8 hose, put it on here. That's reasonably snug fit. So from there, then we need to go to a 3 8 Again, kind of snug. I'm not going to push it all the way in for now, but you'll get the point. So from there, and this is pretty important here, um, we need to have a check valve. Now this allows air to flow in that direction only, but not in that direction. So this required a bit of a stretch I believe to fit this okay and then of course you had the next step down and then this T would trigger this guy when this sees vacuum it closes so this check valve prevents vacuum from going that way, preventing, you know, if meth should splash up, it could get sucked in. And then this prevents the meth from getting sucked in out the bottom because it will be closed when this is seeing vacuum. So that goes to this part of the T. It's a wee bit tight. Okay. So now, we have a situation where, I'm going to try to do this off camera. If I apply a vacuum, if I suck on it, this should open and this should stay blocked. So i got my thumb over it now, so I can let it go and it releases. So when this thing is under vacuum, it is sealed off. No, there's no way the engine can suck meth out. But when there's boost, let me see if you can hear this, you'll see pressure out here. So now this is open and boost comes in, let me see if you can hear it. That's coming straight out here. So let's go ahead and keep piecing these things together. So that anybody who's familiar with small block forward will know exactly what this is. This is a water pump bypass hose. And anyone who's had a small block forward will have one or two of these lying around, I'm pretty sure. So that will go in here, that will go in here. And now, are all important reduction fitting that we made in the mill goes from here to here to here and that dear friends is it by the way this is also pretty much the exact same plan that the Anderson Mr. Freeze uses and I'm pretty sure that they didn't come up with the design because I have a friend who now uh, actually is president of one of the major uh, aftermarket supercharger manufacturers, but did used to work at Eaton, who told me they used to do this very trick years and years and years ago, uh, except they would use nozzles from uh, uh, pesticide sprayers. So anyway, so once again, let's review. So 
it might fit everything into the frame. So this line here is connected to your intake manifold. When it sees vacuum, this will get pulled shut and this check valve will close, thereby sealing off the tank completely because those are the only two fittings to the tank and the tank of course uh, is capable of holding a vacuum and a pressure or pressure and vacuum. Now when boost comes in down this line this will release obviously push up and uh, um, it'll open up this passage air will go through the check valve it'll pressurize this tank causing meth to get pushed out the bottom here through this now open valve and out the discharge. It's pretty simple if you think about it. Um, hopefully that gives you an idea. So anyway, so that's the game plan. So the first thing I needed to know is will this actually work and what does the flow look like coming out of that nozzle and how much does it flow? I figured I needed about half a cup in 10 seconds in order to uh, make up about 20% of my fuel for the uh, LTD. So I was looking for that flow and I wanted to see the nozzle or the, the stream itself. And uh, we already shot that actually last weekend with my uh, wonderful child. Let's roll that footage. All right, so here's a setup of my grandfather's 100 year old ladder. You see my kid's hand with her Beaver Springs Dragway t-shirt there holding the nozzle in the cup. Uh, the first jet we'll try is a 0 .062. Uh, this is not going to focus. It's not going to focus, focus, fo fo focus. Oh wow. Is that focused? Magic has happened. But anyway, it's a 0 .062 jet is the first thing we'll try. Uh, my child will move her hands so you can see uh, the line. Might as well go for it. So here is the nozzle the uh, airlines already been set to 15 psi and I checked it with a separate gauge because you know air compressors and all that down that low all right we need about 10 seconds here we go are we actually recording we are okay <laughs> here we go so let's connect and one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's over half a cup. <laughs> so that's with the .062 jet. That's probably going to work. Let's uh, see if we can show you guys what the actual stream looks like with only 15 pounds. All right, we're going to try to give you a shot of the fan spray, but I don't have a good feeling about any of this. Move it down just a little bit, up just a little bit. My shoes are wet. <laughs> so that's at 15 PSI. Eh, you know, it's going right into the back of rotors. Going 18,000 RPM. Well, it's not the greatest atomization, but it'll work. So stay tuned and subscribe. Thanks.